morning, GTS retail partners. My name is Scott Bohr. I'm not Scott Morris. He's off work this week, uh, attending to some matters, and, and I'm here happily to stand in his stead while we, uh, we have some conversations around our industry of board games. And uh, I am uh, your category manager for gaming specialty products, which includes RPGs, miniature games, and gaming accessories like dice and dice towers and all the fun stuff that helps enhance your play of games. So uh, today we have the privilege of speaking with Matt Highland from DeVere. He's the US representative for DeVere and he's going to talk to us today about two of their new games, Lavina and Paris, both excellent um, visual presentations, both um, really good value propositions. Uh, I've seen them both and, and they look great. They look fantastic. Uh, so I want to make sure that you're aware that uh, this week you'll get a 52% off MSRP discount on those two titles through the 16th if you purchase them through GTS distribution. And uh, one more note here is that if you want to have uh, join in the conversation, I said it before, but I'll say it now again as we've officially started. Uh, there's a chat window you can click on if you hover over the over the mouse, you hover your mouse over the screen, there's a chat button that shows up at the bottom. You click that, and then you have the option of sending a message down at the bottom of that uh, window to either all panelists or all panelists and attendees. Panelists are myself and Matt, we'll be able to see the conversation, and I'll go ahead and, and moderate those questions so that you don't have to worry too much about it, Matt. Um, and then the if you select the all panelists and attendees, everyone in attendance will also be able to see it. So without further ado, I will go ahead and hand the virtual microphone over to Matt Highland from DeVere Games to talk about Lavina and Paris. All right, thank you, Scott. Uh, let's see here. I can't quite see my presentation. You should be able to just uh, share your screen down at, using that button down at the bottom. Yeah. Ah, there we go. All right, cool. Okay, once again, thanks, Scott. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for taking your time to uh, attend this webinar. I hope your holiday season is going really well. I know it's a busy time for you, so I will try to keep this as quick and brief as possible with all of the right uh, information that you need. So we've got a lot of interesting, uh, great gift ideas for you for, uh, for the holidays, and let's jump right into it. Uh, there we go. Uh, quickly, a little bit about DeVere. Um, we're new to North America, relatively new. We started in 2016 with our first launch, which is Holmes, Sherlock, and Mycroft. Uh, it's a great two-player game, continues to sell well, so don't let that one go off your radar if you're looking for two-player games. Um, we, but we did start in Brazil in 1987 as comic book distributors and uh, kind of grew our business through magic distribution actually in a lot of different countries. You can see where we have all these offices now. Um, we have about 400 games in Spanish uh, that uh, are under license. So for example, we've got Catan and Carcassonne and all of the Czech games games. So if you're ever interested in Spanish language games, let me know. We might be able to hook you up uh, through GTS, of course. Um, code, code names or Codigo Secretos sells pretty well for us. We get a lot of people looking for the Spanish version of that one in particular. Um, like I said, we started in 2016 here in North America with English games. We've got about 20 games published thus far, around 10 active titles, and a few, oops, my presentation keeps wanting to jump ahead this morning. Um, and we'll have about four or five more this year, so keep your eyes open for those. We'll probably do another webinar in a few months with our April releases. Okay, today we're gonna to talk about uh, two new games, like Scott mentioned, Paris and La Vigna. Paris is a two-player game, um, plays in about 20 to 30 minutes, highly replayable, really nice components, great graphics. Uh, La Vigna is a um, two to five player game. It's a game that you can teach easily and learn easily. It takes about five minutes to teach, but it has enough depth for advanced players um, to, to keep them interested. Um, the Color Monster and Silk are two of our older titles. They're really not that old. They both came out last year uh, or at the end of uh, 2018. 
Um, Color Monster is a game for younger kids, teaches them how to deal with, uh, how to process and understand their emotions. Great way to create a dialogue with parents and kids. And Silk is more of an advanced gamers game, lots of player interaction um, and unique mechanics and a unique look and feel. And I'll show you more about that a little bit later. Let's start with Lavinia. So Lavinia uh, shipped last week or should be shipping. So it'll be in the warehouse um, at GTS's warehouse fairly soon. Um, still took plenty of time to get orders in. Uh, this was a surprise hit for us at Essen. I think once it got, gets kind of on the table and people can see it, it really it has, it pulls people in. Um, like I said, it's uh, something that gamers of all levels can enjoy. Um, got a lot of nice graphics. It's also great for wine enthusiasts. Z Garcia from the Dice Tower. He likes uh, a lot of our games, uh, most of them anyway. Um, he liked this one quite a bit. One of the comments that stuck out from his review was that there's a lot of gameplay in a small box and lots of cool components. You get a lot for the money. Um, so you can go and obviously you can find the YouTube link on your own. I don't need to provide it here, but it's always nice to have a reviewer give an endorsement like this. Um, it's a good selling point. Actually. You know, I know in stores people go and one of the first things they do is they start to look for reviews so they can see a positive one like this. It helps. There's my presentation jumping ahead again. I don't know why it's doing that, but, uh, you can see this is kind of how the board is laid out. Um, essentially you're going through the vineyard trying to collect these different grape cards and once you have met the thresholds to place them into the barrels um, you can put a barrel down and collect those points so for example like to place into this cellar you need to have a value of 11 or more and the values of the grapes are here and then you have to have certain types of grapes in order to put the barrels down once all the barrels are, are filled in all the cellars cellars the game is over the uh, the one of the cool things that I like about this is the way that the, the players move. So you don't necessarily move in any specific order except for the last player in the vineyard always goes first. So green here could jump all the way to the front and grab that Cabernet card if they want it. Or if you imagine yellow and red are both all the way at the front, green can continue going because they're last and they can collect grape cards all along the way. But there's a bonus for exiting the vineyard first. You get this little uh, wild card chip. It's like a wild grape chip. Um, and that also allows you to go back to the front of the line at the beginning and you get to go first the next round. So you're constantly jockeying for position to try and get those grapes that you really want. And the premise is that the players are heirs, apparent, heir, apparent heirs to a vineyard that their grandfather left them and the person who can build it up uh, the best is going to be the person who inherits the vineyard. There's some product shots. There's that box. Again, great graphics. You get a lot in there. These are the, uh, that's, that's a game board laid out. Looks very nice. This is the kind of game that you can put out. It doesn't take up a ton of space, but you can put it out onto your, in, in your store and it'll definitely attract people. Almost sells itself like a lot of our games. There's the, uh, seller cards, meeples, and these little chips allow you to do things like uh, change the order. You can go backwards and grab a grape that you might have not have been able to get, grab otherwise, or you can kind of dig underneath the pile and get different grapes. And these are your uh, rewards, your, your point counters, if you will, labels, certificates, wine bottles, etc. Just more examples of the cool components you get. So again, this is a great gift recommendation for wine enthusiasts or uh, for people who are wanting to play games with their families. Because the box is relatively small, it does travel well. You get a lot inside there. There's a, a lot of gameplay for the value um, and it's accessible to gamers of all levels. So advanced players are definitely gonna enjoy this because there's enough depth there. But again, you can teach it and learn it in five minutes, um, play after dinner, maybe drinking a glass of wine or something. So two to five players, 45 minutes, eight and up, and a great price of $24.99. By the way, uh, we are participating in the GTS demo program. So when I mentioned that these, these games all look great, if you open up a copy and put it in your store, um, you can use your demo copy for that. All right, let's go to Paris. 
Love these graphics. Um, the idea behind Paris is you're building out the city's light grid in the late 1800s. So the, uh, all, the, all the artwork is really highly thematic and really beautiful. Again, it's another thing that once you get it into the store and people can actually see the packaging, definitely uh, attracts their, their attention. We, uh, let's go back for a second. We did a sneak peek of this at Essen brought about 80 cop or sorry at Gen Con we brought about 80 copies and sold out in a day and a half everybody was walking by saying ooh what's this it, there was definitely a lot of excitement about it and we also sold out at Essen um, so this is a, this this can be a good seller for you another seal of approval from Z he gave it an 8 out of 10 so this is kind of how the game looks when it's um, almost to, to the end. You can see you've got these tiles here. Um, the the game, play, game takes, takes place in two phases. Um, in the first phase, you're going through and laying out all your tiles onto this city grid. Uh, the way you score points is by building buildings adjacent to lampposts. And so then you're going to get uh, a point for every lamppost that's shining on your building. Um, so during the first phase, you can you play your building tiles and you can also select these buildings in order to um, place, place them later. Then in the second phase, you get to play your buildings and you can also choose from these postcards, which are kind of like rule breakers. So um, you can see here you lay your tiles inside the box, which makes for an easy cleanup. And when you're drawing your tiles, you're going to take from your, your own pile here. It's a two-player game, in case I didn't mention that. Um, the, the tiles, you can only take the first one, so you don't know what's in the stack. Uh, adds to replayability. Um, these buildings, by the way, if you take buildings that you can't play at the end of the game, it's a three-point penalty. So you want to be careful during that first phase when you're selecting your buildings. So then in the second phase, uh, you know, you can play them. Let's go back. A, because what the way that it works is you can only play buildings on your own color. So blue, for example, could play on purple's neutral, but blue could only place a building onto their own blue tiles, and orange would do the same thing here, for example. Okay, and then the postcards do things like this one negates the excess building penalty, or uh, this one allows you to create another lamppost so you can score additional points. Some of the postcards. This one allows you to place a building tile over a lamppost, which you normally couldn't do. And this is the painter. He comes with a little cardboard standee that uh, once, if he's in, if he's in that area, all the lampposts that shine on his painting give him exposure and give you give you points. Has a lot of nice components, by the way. This is this is one of the uh, building tiles, just so you can have an, have an example. And there goes my presentation running ahead of me. The way you uh, claim the postcards is you put your chips on there. Once all the postcards are claimed, the game is over. And this is, uh, these are some of the other sides of the reverse, the reverse sides of the postcards. Really beautiful artwork, once again, highly thematic. And this, uh, <laughs> The, my marketing team updated this, included some things I wasn't expecting here, but that kind of gives you an idea of how the buildings are played. Okay, so it's an abstract puzzle kind of game, tile laying with some area control. It's uh, two players, so it's great for couples. There's no combat or anything like that. It's very non-confrontational, but you do jockey for position or jockey for uh, where you wanna lay your tiles, where you can play your buildings, who gets those important postcards first. That's highly replayable and there's a ton of value in a small box. Scott Morris was saying that at BGGCon, he and his friend played this nine times in a row. So they really enjoyed it. Um, and I think this will be a good seller for you, if you, especially if you can open it up and put it in your store, it'll sell itself. And there are the details. Okay, so those are our new releases. Um, go back to a couple of things that came out a little bit earlier, just because I think that they're important mentions and they continue to sell well for us, so they should, they should definitely be on your radar. This is the Color Monster. Color Monster is based on this uh, pop-up book 
It's an international bestseller. Sold millions of copies of this book. It's really cool. Um, and we've sold probably 120,000 units so far globally of the color monster in a bunch of different languages. Uh, the basic idea is the color monster here, he's confused about his emotions. And so his friend, the girl, is going to try and help him untangle all of that. That's why he's all scribbled. He's confused. He doesn't know the difference between like anger and fear or happiness and tranquility. This is the game board. Um, you can see the, the pieces are these nice heavy wooden pieces. Um, if, if any of you have kids or have played games with kids, you know that they can be kind of hard on game components, but this is a, this is a, these are nice heavy pieces. They're easy to clean, hard to wreck. Um, during the game, each of these spaces represents an emotion, like you have happiness, uh, fear, anger, sadness, and tranquility. And the players are going to move the monsters to the monster to the different spaces to collect these chips and try and sort them in the jars. So all the jars at the beginning are, are going to appear like this, face, uh, facing backwards, so you don't know what color they are. And the goal is, as a team, you're trying to sort all the chips into the jars properly and unconfuse the monster, and then that way you win. But in order to collect the chip, when you land on one of these spaces, you have to say the emotion that corresponds to the space. So for example, if uh, my son landed on red, in order to get that red chip, he would have to say something that makes him angry. So maybe he says, uh, I get angry when my brother breaks my toys. And then as his parent, I'm thinking, oh, your brother broke your toys. And it gives me a little bit of insight into like maybe something that he's been going through lately. And it goes both ways. As the adult, I can say things like on the happiness space. So I'm, I'm happy when I get a hug from my kid. And then maybe that way I get more hugs. Um, so... I don't want to be that manipulative, but that's just a, one way that it could work out. Um, but it's a great way to engage in a dialogue with, between parents and kids to kind of get some insight into what they're thinking, get them thinking about their emotions and uh, what sorts of events or, or situations might trigger those emotions. Yay. Uh, this is a, a great, Gift a gift for families who have young uh, or families who are gamers that have young kids and they want to get their kids into gaming or maybe you have a grandparent who comes in um, and is looking for something that they can they can enjoy with their grandkids. Um, the game was developed by a child psychologist and so we get a lot of comments from teachers and therapists at shows and so for, for example saying that they can use this in in educational settings and, and therapy sessions. So that's an additional selling point. Um, it's, it comes in a big, huge box about the size of a Dominion uh, box. So there's a lot of perceived value. And again, it's one of those that if you can open it up and put it on the shelf, it's definitely going to draw eyeballs. We sold out of this one at Gen Con in about two days. We had a nice big display and everybody was coming by saying how much they love the artwork. So that's the color monster. And then we have silk. So Silk is definitely more of an advanced gamers game. It's not super complicated, but it's, it's a deeper game. There's a ton of player interaction and it's not your average uh, barnyard Euro, nothing wrong with those games, but you can see it's got a different kind of look and feel to it. The, uh, the premise is you are a, a uh, silk worm shepherd and you're trying to drive your silkworms around and graze them for points, graze the tiles for points. This one again was, uh, we got a great endorsement from Man vs. Meeple. It was one of their top 10 games of 2018. It launched uh, in the US in December of last year, so it's about a year old. But they did three segments on this. They really enjoyed the game. Every time we see them at shows, they keep mentioning how much they like it. Again, there's that Miyazaki style look and feel that we wanted to go for, which is a little bit different. And it, Definitely attracts eyeballs, pulls people in. I won't go too much into the gameplay, but um, I I'll talk about one thing, which is the really cool part of the game is that the, it's all about chain reactions. So basically these silkworms here are trying to graze on these tiles for points and each of the tiles have different point values, like three points for the green tile, two points for the rocky tile, one point for the hay tile. 
but you also have shepherds, mastiffs, and the ukami. This is what the ukami looks like. See there, nice, cool little custom meeple. <clears throat> the ukami is the bad guy. You want to avoid the ukami, but the shepherd can push the mastiff or order the mastiff to move. Um, it can also the shepherd can also move the silkworms. They don't do anything except sit there and graze. The mastiff can chase the silkworms away too, um, and the ukami actually captures the silkworms and puts them in her den in order to save them up for winter. So you could do something like in your turn, yellow could make the mastiff move. The mastiff could go here and gets to push the silkworms wherever they want. So maybe he's gonna push his own silkworms onto this uh, green tile for more grazing points. And then he's gonna push this purple silkworm into the ukami who then captures it and puts it in her den. So you can do all these sorts of cool movement things. Uh, brown here might be able to push these silkworms, he could push his own brown silkworms onto the more valuable tile, but also push the purple one off of the board, and it would go back into the silkworms, uh, into purple's reserve. So everything that you do in the game um, impacts the other players. There's a ton of player interaction, and you're constantly having to adapt your strategies and your tactics on the fly, which uh, I personally like those sorts of things. And because the tiles are gonna come out in random order, there are a lot of different ways to win. No, I know you probably hear that a lot, but really no two games are alike and uh, each game has different strategies and different, different tactics employed. So you can see it's a unique game, um, lots of player interaction. It does play really well with two. I get a lot of couples at shows coming by and saying they want to buy it just so they can play uh, with the two of them. And a distinct look and feel with cool components. Two, four players, 45 minutes, 10 and up, and a great price at $34.99. So we talked about Lavinia, which is, a uh, again, a really nice presentation, great gift item for both advanced gamers and casual gamers, easy to teach, easy to learn, uh, a lot of fun in a small box. Paris, beautiful two-player game. Nice components, uh, tons of replayability. Like I, like I said, Scott uh, Morris mentioned he played it nine times in a row at BGGCon. The Color Monster, um, great game to talk about emotions with your kids for $34.99. That kind of dialogue is definitely worth it. And Silk for more advanced players, uh, tons of player interaction, uh, unique look and feel, unique mechanics. And again, a uh, great presentation. So thank you very much. I don't know if there are any questions or. Uh, no questions just yet, um, but retailers, if you have questions and, and these you know, are fantastic opportunities, uh, like uh, Matt said, they're on the demo program. So you can pick up extra copies uh, at a discount, at a significant discount in order to demo them in your store. Um, the, the pop on those boxes is fantastic. The artwork uh, is definitely something that DeVere spent a lot of time and effort into uh, creating a presentation that really pops off the shelf, it's something that your uh, customers will look at and say, oh, what's that? It stands out against all the, all the other games that are blue and black and, and dark, uh, something that really gets their attention. And then you lay it out on the table and it looks beautiful and it looks engaging and it looks uh, like a lot of fun to play. The, there's, from what I can tell, there's very little confrontation. Maybe Silk is the most confrontational of the games. Yeah. Where you actually push somebody off the board or, or feed their animals to the monster. Uh, but otherwise, they, they're engaging in, in relationship building, uh, especially the color monster, where it's, it's really all about that relationship that you have with your children or with, with your friends that you can um, share those more intimate kind of details about your life. Uh, just fantastic opportunities. Uh, great values and uh, something that uh, a partnership that I know that Scott really values, uh, Scott Morris really values and GTS really values uh, the relationship that we have. Um, so if you have questions, please feel free to go ahead and pop those into the, into the chat window. Um, we'll just give a couple of minutes. Um, I don't know, Matt, sure. if you want to share some, some uh, contact details if you want. Um, yeah. So on the last slide, um, I don't know if you can all see it, but my, 
uh, email, my cell phone number. I don't know if that was, this is a great idea to put up there, but you're welcome to use it. My cell phone number is there. You can con call me with any questions and uh, also our web page is there. Um, if you want to go ahead and, and share that again, I actually stopped the sharing, but if you want to jump back in there with that, oh, I'll okay. share that last screen, that's fine. You can do that. Yep. Yeah, there you go. So you can all see right, all, my, all my contact details. And I am going to send a copy of the presentation to Scott. So I don't know what he does with that, if he distributes it or whatever, but he can, uh, hopefully it'll be on there as well. One, one thing I, I, I forgot to mention is that we, we work with the double exposure group in the Envoy program. So if you ever wanted to get an Envoy to come in or a Herald to come in and do demos in your store, we can, uh, I'm happy to facilitate that. We also do the Splash Weekend events where uh, retailers can sign up to have people come in and do and do demos on a given weekend. It's kind of like a special promotional weekend. So hopefully you can take advantage of that. Um, and again, with, with uh, we participate with the GTS demo program, so you can get copies of the games and uh, and open them up and put them on the shelf. And they do really I, sell themselves almost because the the presentations are nice. Are are design department does an amazing job. I wish I could take credit for what they do, but uh, they, they, they do a nice job. I have to, and, and you know, when they say uh, you can't judge a book by its cover, well, when you have great graphics, it definitely helps to sell the sell games. Um, so, and then to have a good game to back it up as well helps a lot. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And these, uh, I know I've got both of these new titles on pre-order, so Looking forward to playing those with my with my wife and my kids. So nice. it's been a lot of fun. All right, um, I think I think you've answered all the questions. There's no uh, no questions coming in from the uh, chat window. Okay. So, uh, if you have any any last things, oh, what we do with these videos is actually we, we put them up on on YouTube as part of our collection of uh, all the different webinars. So if you if you're unsure about having your your cell phone up there. For, on a YouTube video, I can take care of that for you, but you that's all right. What you want to do. All right. I'll just Great. get a ton of calls from China, you know, <laughs> <laughs> even more. All right. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you everybody. Appreciate your time and uh, good luck during the holiday season. Yeah. And thank you, Matt. Thank you for being here. Thank you retailers for taking time out of your day. I'll go ahead and return that time back to you and have a great sales day. Have a great week. And uh, we'll be back again tomorrow with another uh, of our fantastic vendors. So we look forward to hearing from you then. Take care. All right. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Bye.